Hey everybody, welcome back to the final video of the budget do-it-yourself kitchen remodel series. So here's where we left off. I have all the substrate put in and then I had the granite guys come out to the house and uh, they cut everything, fit everything, and then installed it. Now, I didn't want to record them because they were just jamming out and I didn't want to impede, you know, their work or anything. Um, so here's the first two uh, pieces of the granite they installed on the left and right side of the stove. And they did just did a great job. Um, we did not, we thought we were going to use our original sink and we got it up to the grand, brand new granite and it looked like garbage. So on the spot, we had to go just say, hey, just cut out the hole for the sink. I'll go pick one up and then I'll drill out the holes for the faucet, the air gap and uh, garbage disposal start on and off button. So that kind of threw a wrench in it, but hey, it's nothing we can't do, right? So I initially drilled out an extra hole on the under mount sink, and then I measured all three holes, transferred them to the granite, measured, and just double checked everything five times, and then I started drilling out. So I'm using a, uh, I used two different hole saws. I used the Milwaukee diamond hole saw and it had like a pilot um, bit in it. So it wouldn't wander and walk on me. And then I uh, finish it off with a rigid uh, diamond hole saw and they were one and three eighths inches. And uh, I wore a mask just to keep the dust out of my lungs. I kept it wet and I just went uh, nice and slow and they just turned out perfect. So here you could see why I notched out the upper part of the cabinets. So that way I can install these undermount sink uh, studs and you use epoxy to mount them straight onto the granite. And then you use wing nuts to hold on the uh, brackets which hold the sink up. So here is the pile of parts that I'll need to finish the installation of the rest of the kitchen sink stuff. Um, I did let those epoxy studs dry overnight and then I applied some sealant on the top of the flange of the undermount sink. I positioned it up and I held it in place using a jack stand that fit under and uh, let it cure overnight. Um, so here I'm just using some silicone caulking. Uh, on the under mount of all these accessories, just as some added protection. They come with gaskets, but I just didn't want anything leaking after all this hard work. And then I cleaned it up with some uh, mineral spirits. So I'm gonna have my wife help me hold the sink while I work underneath it, getting all the um, nuts and everything installed. And she had it centered while I tightened it down. Um, so here I'm gonna use some plumber's putty to install the uh, drain, uh, flange for the garbage disposal and uh, so pretty pretty simple and straightforward it wasn't that hard but uh, the plumbing since it was a right hand drain instead of a center I had to go get some uh, more uh, another p-trap kit uh, and extend it about two inches so it really wasn't that difficult and here it is all set up plumbing all done everything moved off to the right. And then I'm just kind of cleaning up my mess with some mineral spirits and making it look all nice, pretty, and brand new. So here we go, first test of everything set up. You know, one thing I did screw up is I installed the hot and cold water lines backwards. Uh, so I had to go underneath and flip it around. But that just took a quick minute. So everything worked. All right guys, we got all the countertops and granite backsplash is installed. Um, now we're going to add the backsplash um, up on top of the previous one. So I got this idea from the guy at Home Depot. He mentioned using the simple mat stuff and he said you could put it right over the top of the old existing tile as long as you degrease it and clean it um, and there's no residue on it. So I bought 10 square feet of it, made sure to read the back and sure as heck you can. So. The next step is I'm going to go ahead and take off all the outlet covers. I made sure I opened the breaker on the electrical panel. I'm going to tape everything off. I'm going to clean all the residue from the old backsplash. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay this out and stick it on and uh, stick on that stone backsplash and grout. Um, so stay tuned. 
All right, we got all the countertops prepped and protected, taped off all the edges, uh, degreased the backsplash. I have the power secured and the outlets uh, pulled out. Um, so the next step is we're gonna apply the simple matting. Um, so the first step is you take off the white backing and you're gonna stick it right on the wall. You're gonna use your float. You're just gonna press it on there. Don't pull that clear cover um, back and off until you're ready to start applying the tile. So we're gonna go ahead and apply all the simple matting on and then uh, we'll come back when we're ready to apply the tile. So one thing I will mention is that simple mat is stupid easy to apply. You just use some scissors to cut it to the size you need Use the scissors to cut the outlet cover rectangle holes out and stick it right on. All right, we got that simple mat all installed on the old backsplash. And now I'm going to start installing the new uh, stone. So the tools I'm going to be using are a speed square, a pencil. Um, don't really need that. I'm going to use my float, a pair of uh, angle cutters. Um, I'm going to be using some eighth inch spacers and one tool I've been so happy with with this build I just got it about a week ago is this uh, Milwaukee M12 uh, cutoff tool it uses a three inch blade and they have a nice diamond cutting blade and it just eats right through this tile um, so I'm gonna go grab my vacuum hook up my hose uh, you can use this wet or dry. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll try it out wet as well. Um, but I did use this tool to trim up the bottom of the old backsplash and the sides before they installed the granite. Um, they needed a little bit more clearance, so literally took me, you know, 10 minutes to do all these walls with this thing. Um, so super happy with it. Milwaukee did a great job with this tool. Not sponsored by them, but you, you see me use their tools often. Just a huge fan, um, and I like them, personal preference. So, let me get started on this. All right, guys, so you only want to do sections at a time. So I pulled the first clear plastic backing off of uh, the simple mat, and I'll do this section, and I'll work from the bottom out to that backsplash. Um, so only take off the section that you're going to actively work. You don't want a bunch of dust flying or anything. So I did the first piece. Um, I used the angle cutters to cut one of the legs, two of the legs off so I can butt that eighth inch gap on this side. And then, so all you do is you pull that uh, pl plastic backing off. Let's try to do this. There is a back to these, you can tell. So you're gonna need a spacer. I'll turn this once I get it. There. There. I will turn those guys. So I will lightly keep that in place while I get the other spacers in. And I'll turn these. All right. So once I get that guy in in place. Take my float and seat it down on the mat. Be careful not to touch any other piece. So it's going to be as simple as that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get going through. When I get to the end, I'm sure I'll need to hack some off. And then I'm going to stagger them. Um, so that will be right in the center gapped as well. So I'll come back to you guys once I get this whole section knocked out.
All right, so we got all that back simple mat put up. We got these natural stone tiles um, put in place and spaced out. They real look really nice. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to grout. Um, I went the easy route and I got the simple grout ready to use and we got it in DeLorean gray. So you're gonna need that if you do it this way, a uh, two inch putty knife. You're gonna need a grout float. I just bought the little cheapo foam one. You're gonna need some really nice new sponges and a couple buckets of five gallon water. Uh, I'm just gonna have my wife constantly replace it for me. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna um, lightly dampen the back tile. So you don't want this thing soaking wet. You basically, you don't want it dripping out. So we're just gonna go ahead, go through it. Get them just nice and damp. So I'll be honest, I was a little worried when we put the first tile on. Some of them, when we pulled the spacers out, they kind of drooped like a sixteenth of an inch or maybe an eighth of an inch. So. We cut some of the spacer pieces, shoved them in behind the grout, and then I put it over to hold them up. So, um, you know, they shifted a little bit. You know, it was odd to me, but it worked out fine. And after I got the grout in, wasn't too worried about it after that. So, all right, we've got these things nice and wet. So what we're gonna do, open that bad boy back up. I'm gonna use the putty knife to load my float. So if this was a big um, shower or bathroom where you had a big wall, definitely use this long piece, but I, it's such a small space up here. I'm primarily gonna use uh, one of the sides of it and then I'll shift to the side when I'm kind of floating it out. Don't worry, power is off. I've tested it, breaker's open. Um, so you don't wanna push this into the um, lines. You wanna go at a 45 degree angle uh, against them. So it's going to look like crap when you put this on, um, but it'll turn out nice, I promise. So Just constantly just press them in at a 45, loading up your float. And uh, keep on going with it. So here I'll go with the wide side, press it all in. And I'll do a couple passes just to make sure it's all in. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and I'll come to the next section of the video. All right, so I pressed all the grout in and now I'm just gonna come get that wide side. Kinda of go at a 45 degree angle. Scrape off that excess. It's starting to dry on me. All right, now here comes that clean, damp sponge. We do nice circular motions. You can see that grout is going to clean right up. After you do a little, you know, foot section, flip it over and start doing little circular motions. All right, clean your sponge. What's up, bro dog? They're pretty critical. You don't want anything dripping out of there. For your dog to drink that nasty water. And that tile underneath is going to start to appear. Get that corner 
that's kind of tough. All right, so I kind of want to do this uniformly, so I'm going to go ahead and start coming this way to the end, and I'll start back. Um, so you want to do this kind of quick. And you don't want to oversaturate that grout with water. use of that water so we're going to dump it get some fresh water and keep on going until this side looks like that all right so i've gone over this about three or four times so it's gonna be my last time before i move on to this section uh, but as you can see it came out really nice it's kind of worrying the first time you do this at first because you're just putting all this um, grout over the top of it and you can't even see the tile but it comes out really nice. So flip it over. And I'm not pushing hard, just very light pressure, circular patterns. Don't go with the uh, lines up or down, left or right. All right. So after this dries for about four hours, you're gonna go back over it and you're just gonna clean each tile without getting the grout lines. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this out and then the piece behind you where the coffee maker is and uh, I'll come back. We're going to clean up those tile. I didn't end up recording this part of it, but I did remove the blue tape and I used that sponge and I blended the grout um, on the transition next to the granite. I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, it's going to be jacked up when you pull that tape up, but I did not let it dry, pulled it up and I just uh, cleaned it up and it was just perfect. So I will have to, you know, add some caulking on the end of the tile and make it look pretty, but otherwise she came out pretty nice. Brody is just always at my feet every step of the way and just follows me everywhere I go. All right, so what do you do after you've been working literally 10 hours on a work night? Midnight six hours you have pizza beer bourbon and wine with your neighbors <laughs> cheers guys all right we're down to the last final few details so here i'm getting some quarter round molding and i'm just reinstalling it uh, on this floor to the island transition to hide some of that gap and just put it back because that's how it looked before so I did have to buy some more because I did change the, 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 the dimensions of the kitchen island and it kicked it out a quarter inch on all sides because of the shiplap. Um, but easy enough, no big deal. Um, so here I'm using a Japanese pole saw to cut this uh, trim piece against the molding. And I like using this because it's highly accurate. There's really no tear out. Um, I can butt it up against that molding. I'm not gonna damage. Uh, the shiplap um, cuts pretty nice and quick. If you don't have one of these, you need to get it. It's going to make your life easy in a lot of different applications, not just doing molding stuff. So once I got uh, my trim molding all cut up, uh, piece by piece, I'm going to use an 18 gauge Brad Neller to shoot it in place. Um, so pretty simple process. Just hold it up against uh, the transition and shoot a couple. So here I on the top to hide this gap, my wife never noticed it, but it was bugging me. Um, I got 11 sixteenths uh, cove molding and uh, I'm just fitting it up to the transition on the underside of the top part of the island. And it, it does give it a little bit more design, which I really liked. Hey guys, welcome to the very end of this three video series on the budget do-it-yourself home makeover remodel video series. 
we are like 99% wrapped up in this kitchen. Uh, good enough to conclude this series and show you guys and hopefully you guys tackle this uh, in your own kitchen if you want to freshen it up without going, you know, the whole gambit of ripping everything out, demoing and reinstalling new cabinets if yours are in still good shape. So to kick off the tour, I'm going to show you the first part. So on our kitchen island, remember I showed you my wife had this great idea to do this uh, shiplap paneling. So we did the shiplap paneling and we did a whitewash. I did like a 11 sixteenths um, cove trim piece on top to hide the seam. I did uh, just white caulking on, against the shiplap against the wall. I reinstalled the matching uh, molding on the floor and I wrapped the molding and trim all the way on this side of the kitchen island uh, to make it match and look uniform. We're on the fence about doing kind of a design pattern on this partition, um, but you know, for now it looks pretty awesome. So we did that. We went with granite countertops um, and you know, we, we, we spent like two weeks trying to figure out what color we wanted and trying to find the right vendor to choose from. So here it is all installed and wrapped up uh, with a bull nose on all leading edges. Uh, we have the undermount kitchen sink. Uh, we got this kit from Krauss and it came with the sink, um, the faucet, and uh, kind of some accessories. So I had to get some more plumbing things, um, but I really like the undermount sink look. Uh, and I also did uh, the garbage disposal button. You know, I, I showed you I relocated that. And then uh, the very end of it, we did the natural stone backsplash. And again, it's one of those things you think you're going to nail it and it's quick and easy to put up, but the hardest part is just finding what you want you know, and, and what color and what style. But, you know, I think there's something we both like, we both enjoy, and uh, it came out pretty nice. So just kind of recap, we did uh, Swiss coffee color from Valspar for the cabinets, top and bottom. And we did this kind of like black, brown, it has a little bit of sparkle in it for the hardware um, to match. And I don't recall what color granite cut this was but uh, you know it's it's a black white kind of salt pepper look um, so yeah I hope you guys like it um, thanks for following I know it's three videos long it took two weeks for 80 percent of the work about another two weeks because I was procrastinating finished doing the caulking the molding and everything else so you know, once the major part was done, I kind of sat on this for a while. So the last thing I got to do is I got to put some edging on uh, the backsplash on this side and on this on this wall, and it'll be all wrapped up. So that's the last thing. Still on the fence what I want to do, but uh, yeah, we're we're there. You know, so we're happy. We love it. Um, I mean, we spent added all the numbers, we've spent $4,000 on everything. And I think that's a pretty good price. The majority of it was the, grounder the granite countertops with the installation of it. Um, the other thousand was a little bit of paint, sink, uh, plumbing, hardware, all the little stuff that adds up. So I think for $4,000, it's pretty budget friendly, especially if your cabinets and carcasses and doors are in great shape. Uh, you just want to freshen it up a little bit. So. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with me until the bitter end. And uh, if you like what you watch, please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for the next one.